Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Chibera here, as always and as usual. Today, I'll be taking you along on a journey to explore the rich history and heritage of Enugu State. Today, we are set to visit the ancient smelting town of Leja. Leja is the oldest smelting site in the whole wide world and it's so interesting to know that such a rich cultural heritage is right here in my beautiful state of Enugu. Anyways, I tagged along with a group of researchers who are investigating the smelting site and its link to the people of Leja. And um, come along with us, let us see what we can discover at the site. Before we got down to Ledger, we had to make a very quick stop at the University of Nigeria and Soka campus in order to pick up our tour guide. We seized the opportunity to visit the school's atelier and gallery. We also had enough time to check out the displays at Ntachiobi, an exhibition of culture-themed craftsmanship that was put up to celebrate the history of the Igbo race. Quickly, we were back on our way to Ledger, and the beauty of this scenery would melt even the hardest of hearts, guys. Believe you me. Well, keep watching. Let's learn a thing or more about our destination. Well, my eyes this opportunity to welcome all of you to this particular site. The place we are is called Otobugudu Noka Ledger. Dunoka is one of the villages in Leja. Leja as a community is made up of 33 villages. But this place, is, this place is unique for several reasons. First, of the 33 villages, traditionally, in that the traditional political structure of Leja, the oldest man of this particular village is the person who is the Eze Leja. Eze means the king. He so pretends in every other deliberation that the community is, is doing. Then, incidentally, this site is the traditional parliamentary square of Ledger. Any decision, the 33 villages meet here to take the decision. But something unique about this place is that it's not only that it's showcasing the heritage and history of the community, but it goes a long way to give some sense of pride to the black race, especially Africa. Why? Because in the history of civilization, Iron Age is regarded as the age of the beginning of major civilization. And those who had knowledge of Iron, we are regarded as the foreigners of civilization. Before we did excavation here in 2006, of which the result came out in 2007 and was now announced in Mozambique during the AAN conference, studies have shown that the knowledge of iron smelting diffused from Africa, from uh, Asia to Africa, especially within the Anatolia. So, especially among the Hittites, they said iron smelting originated from among the Hittites. Incidentally and coincidentally, all the days that the Hittites we are quoting, okay, uh -huh. yes. So they quoted 2000 BC as the beginning of iron smelting. 
Then, lo and behold, we did the excavation here, sell the samples to uh, Uppsala. They dated, returned the date of 2000 BC. Now, that's really a fundamental question. Can the issue of diffusionism still hold? Yes, we have seen evidence of smelting. How are we sure that the people living here did it inherit it from people who have, who have dispersed from this place? Is there any connect between the present occupants of this community and the iron smelting that was done or the relics of iron smelting here? Because they now want to see how to establish, because now there are no smelters. But in as much as there are no smelters, how do we relate the tangible heritage here with the intangible heritage? From then on, we have interviewed a lot of people and made some publications too about this place. And we were able to establish that actually there is a very strong link between the progenitors of this industry and the present occupants of the community. So by the time we'll be going one by one, we'll be pointing to the relationship. Please, let's move up. Yeah. 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 To the team. So, you present to your name of the... Okay. 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 I all these things you see here are evidence of iron smelting. This is a slag block. Residue. And then... No, 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 no. Don't, don't, sorry. You can touch others, but this one and this... You see this? You see this? Nobody touches one, two. But... Uh -huh. Then, you see, the first thing to, to, to answer the question about the issue of the link between the present occupants and the, the relics is, look at this house here. This is a typical blast furnace. It looks like a blast furnace. That This is the shape of a blast furnace. Except here, look at all other buildings. You don't see anyone shaped as this. And this is the hillock or the house of the incarnate being. That is what the people will call masquerades. But those of us in history, archaeology and others, we don't use that word masquerade because that is a derog is derogatory in the real meaning of what it represents. Then this is the house of the incarnate beings of this particular community. And the incarnate beings is equally linked to iron smelting. So because most of the rituals about the incarnate beings have a very big connect with iron. To the extent that, okay, you were here the other time, one of the incarnate beings, if it is to display, there is a particular portion up there that is, that is the house that was assumed to be the house of the chief smith. Even if you go there, you see the slag, you see a human face embossed on a slag. So everyone that every masquerade that is what is sort of coming 
it follows this way. There is a road here, which they call Ozoma. That is the path of the spirits. It follows it to that place, do some, uh, pay some uh, allegiance to the smelters before it comes back here. And incidentally, if it is going there, the head region must be up. But once it gets there and coming back, the head is pushed backwards. That represents the time it is up, smelting is, is going on. By the time it's up, it's down, smelting has finished. And if you corroborate it with what you see on ground here, once you, they finish smelting, they destroy the furnace, and then even the tuye, they break the tuye and pack it inside. In terms of ontological category, the people believe that those smelters had some forces controlling them. And uh, those of you in gender studies, especially the feminists, will be very happy with this. <laughs> you see that at that place where you see pottery shells and others, that is the shrine of a female deity known as Adada, because Adada is a female deity. And it is assumed that Adada is the mother deity of the community. And she was a person controlling the environment even while the smelting is done. So in every village square in Leja, you must see that Adada shrine. And in an institution in it, you, you must see this issue of iron slag. Now, Hmm? So is there any relationship to the earth? Yeah, yeah, yeah is, 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 there, there is a relationship. Then Adada herself is assumed, even as a woman, she's assumed to be a professional smelter because the praise names the people give her is my Inji Guateto. That is a woman who uses steel as her chewing stick. <laughs> you see? Yeah. So in that case, you now see that Assuming there is no link between the community and smelting, how come that their mother deity is giving such a name? How come that their incarnate being, after moving and displaying, we go to a, the, a, a furnace, uh, a, uh, the workshop at a financial smelter to do some uh, obeisance? Then, why is it that ongoing, it must follow through the path of the spirits? This is the monument for which we are called Oshul. It is for warfare. Now, it has a lot of rituals that are tied to it, which is about warfare. But the good thing about it is that in worshiping it, Yam, which is the king of the crops, and even if you look at it, it looks like a Yam man, a big Yam man. But on top of it, there is a hole indeterminate is very indeterminate so anything after sacrificing and people have eaten any remainder is not taken home they open the till the lid and pour it there it has a significance since it is warfare the people reason that in warfare the primary consideration is victory not sharing of booty so if you take the remainders back home it's like sharing of booty you don't share booty until after the war look at this Look at the other one and look at this. The three belong to the same fecal species. The three belong to the same fecal species. But this one is ritualized. Uh -huh. oh. the, name, the name is Utu Deligwe. Hmm? Now, that is the symbol of justice. And one of the intriguing things here is that you can use the, the liver for the other one to do the local foil in terms of cooking uh, moi moi or anything. You can use this, but you dare not use this. Where you use this, nobody will tell you not to use. But if you use this, be sure, no matter the amount of heat you apply, that food will never get done. So the food not done in means that truth remains constant. It doesn't change its form. So that was what part of the answers we, we got. And then in ancient times, when the issue of executing people, somebody who did something uh, wrong in the community, a taboo, that equally served as the executioner's stick. That is where the person is died. Does he also have like a custodian for it? No, the person who is the, in charge of this entire square is the custodian. And he, here he is. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Here he is. The oldest person in this village is the custodian of this place.
there are many things here that for those of us who are interested in heritage management, this place raises a whole lot of questions. Because here, you see plants used by the smelters in, to keep themselves alive. Like by then, there were no shoes. But they went uphill, confronting tons and most of them. How do they, assuming the thing, there is a, something like, a, what do you call it, a, something pinch them in the leg and they can not come out, a thorn or something. How do they remove it? Because there are some that will be very deep. By the time you remove it, it creates a sore. But they not have something, just a leaf. They brought it, they squeeze it, pour it there. Within a space of time, highest one day, two days, the tongue will pull out on its own. These are things that our people should be researching. Like there's a plant. Yeah? They, they, they call it in Sechi. Mm -hmm. Then there is a plant I, I, I brought and showed them here. Uh -huh. they, they, like this one now is there still, we can find it. Anything like rat, once you bring it and place it, no, no. Once you place it where rats are going, yes, it may not kill it at all, but once the rat pass by, the thorns, once the, the, the thorn pierces it, you see maggot growing on the, on the rat. And then naturally the, cat will, the rat will die. These are ways they checked. Then in terms of malaria, which is prevalent in Africa, they had a lot of drugs, like, they had many they use in the cure of malaria. All these things are rampant. And then up, up the hills there, you see still raw iron encrusted in stones. Yes, yet government is not doing anything about that. It's in commercial quantity. In commercial, there, there, are, there, there are some uh, geologists have been here. Uh -huh. They have made sure, they have uh, certified that they have iron in commercial quantity here in this town, but all to not avail, no, it's not being utilized. Then I told you, like, uh, there is a, a hill there, that is uh, Uguamuf. That is where one of our students in archaeology, uh, 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 yeah. okay. there is a, a, an abandoned human settlement there. That's where I was talking of the polling in terms of uh, this terracing. Uh, that's where they did the excavation. If you, if you look at that there, people are still living there. Oh. On top of that one, Ugum Diamonye, that's what they call that one. Uh, uh, no, there is a road that, that, that they use. Uh, people are still living on hilltops there. Because that goes to... If you read the works of Dile Ford, it will tell you that in eastern Nigeria, the earliest human settlements were found on hilltops for purposes of defense. Uh, so that goes... And even this terracing is a, a, one of the earliest forms of agriculture. So any place you see terracing, see human settlements in, uh, on hilltops, that goes a long way to establish a ancient, ancient settlement. And then, what we are waiting to confirm is whether the police, we are going to get the date of the police we got there, we are, is going to have any relationship with the date of the smelting here. Mm -hmm. Once we have that, then the case is finished. Guys, it was truly an amazing experience for me. Truly, there is more than meets the eye about this place. The very trees whose of supernatural aura one would take a lifetime to experience and discover. Thank you if you got to this point. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did. Remember to share your comments in the comment section. Like this video, share with your friends and your family, and I'll see you in my next episode. Okay, bye-bye.